All right, let's take a look at recording video inside of vMix. And before we look at the vMix settings, I just want to talk a little bit about resolution, frame rate, and quality because they're different things. And I just wanted you to get a full overview of these. So most of the resolutions out there are 1080p or 720p. Even though there's 4K cameras and vMix is 4K capable, most live streams are either 720 or 1080. Most live streams are also at 30 frames per second. The resolution and the frame rate are important things to consider, but the biggest consideration for quality is actually something called the bit rate, also known as bandwidth in some scenarios. So the bit rate is essentially how much data are you streaming or in this case, recording? And we'll take a look at all of those sessions. But the way to kind of conceptualize this is to think, okay, if I have a 1080p, right, which is a full HD live stream at 30 frames per second, it could have different bit rates. So you should you could have a high quality live stream at 1080p at 30 frames a second, and that would mean the bit rate would be maybe six or 10 or 20 megabits per second. You could have the same resolution and frame rate, 1080p, 30 frames per second at a low bit rate, and that lower bit rate would be lower quality. It would take less bandwidth to live stream and it takes less storage to record. So bit rates and bandwidth are measured in megabits per second. And then once those files are stored on your hard drive, then they're referred to as what you're familiar with, megabytes, right? Kilobits, gigabytes. And so uh, what we're talking about is a bit rate that's being recorded directly to your computer. So when we look at 4K, for example, you know, you basically, you have a larger space of pixels and the bit rate is the data that fills in that canvas. So there's really no point in having a large 4K canvas if you don't have the bandwidth to live stream it or the bit rate or the storage on your computer to save it in a high enough quality to paint that picture. So the way I like to think about it is if you've got a big canvas and you're painting it with red and blue and green, right? It's the amount of paint that is on the canvas. That's kind of like the bit rate. And if you only have so much bit rate to paint with, you might as well paint it on a smaller canvas. And that's why a lot of streamers will use 720 or 1080 and optimize the bit rate that they use so that the it will look better. It will be higher quality. It won't be stretching the pixels. Yet, 4K is still capable and it all depends on the bandwidth that you have for live streaming in 4K and the storage on your computer and the processing power on your computer to handle 4K. Okay, that was a three minute long-winded conversation about resolution, frame rate, and bit rate. Hopefully that makes sense. And this chart here kind of gives you an idea of some of the recommended bit rates and streaming bandwidth. Take it, to take it to the next level, now that we're talking about recording, you're gonna be thinking about how much storage do I need? Well, basically it depends on the resolution and frame rate, right? But really mainly the bit rate that you use to record in. So a 4K video in 20 megabits per second which is basically one minute of video recorded and on your hard drive, that turns into 84 megabytes. Now, one hour at 4K at 20 megabits per second is five gigabytes. So, you know, when you're using vMix, it's really nice to use a solid state hard drive, but you can have an external hard drive as well, um, which maybe isn't the solid state. Um, all of the assets that you use, pictures, videos, and things like that should probably be on the same solid state hard drive as vMix is running for everything to run smoothly. That's just a little tip. But in general, you can see like 1080p here uh, at five megabits per second, it's only 20 megabytes. So an hour is only 1.2 gigabytes. So it's just something to think about. And so what we're gonna do is now look at vMix here and I'll take this full screen. And basically, there's the record button down here. So when we go to that record button, it opens up all of our recording settings. Now, 
there's different codecs that you can choose from. So there's AVI, Windows Media Viewing, or WMV, MP4, and FFmpeg. Now, AVI doesn't really offer much compression because it doesn't, you, you just basically, it's uncompressed. So AVI is going to be a very big file, uh, but it's lossless. There's no compression. Um, it's a really, really great, uh, high quality video format, but it will be massive. You could just try the, the, the files will be absolutely massive. And so vMix even gives you the option to create a new file every five minutes, every 10 minutes because of how big those files are. But if you have a Hollywood film or a high-end production that needs that, you have that option. Now, um, WMV gives you the option to change the bit rate. This is an interesting one. It is more popular now uh, because it can be used for streaming as well on your local area network. But in general, most people use MP4. It's the standard. It's easy to upload to YouTube or Facebook quickly. And basically, you can select up to 75 megabits per second. Now, I generally record in 6, 8, or 12. It actually makes a pretty big difference. If I'm recording in 6, it's half the quality as if I was recording in 12. Um, so half the quality, but also half the file sizes. So when I'm transferring it via Dropbox and doing different things, it's much easier for me to handle the smaller video files. So generally, I'm in the neighborhood of like 6, 8, or 12. Uh, we use the hardware encoder, which is our NVIDIA graphics card, and make it fault tolerant. vMix now has vMix 24, which has a new vMix fault tolerant recording option. You have the option to choose which audio that you would like to be included with your recording. So you can choose like one of those different audio buses that we'll learn about, or just have the master. You can include a little separate audio delay, uh, which is nice if you want to do some audio recordings. Uh, we'll show you how to do that in an upcoming video. And then FFmpeg, again, basically 8 to 75 megabits per second for the quality. Now, you do have the option to do a second recording as well. So maybe you want to do a second recording that has a different audio bus attached. Um, you can do a lot of different things here or choose one of your other outputs that you have set up for the second recording. So recording one might be output one, which is your main production. Output two might actually be the second uh, output that you have set up in your outputs. Now, the final thing that I will mention is that vMix does have a multi-quarter. This is going to come up in an upcoming video, so I'm not going to dig into it in too much more detail, but the regular record is for getting a really nice recording of your overall production and maybe a secondary output. The multi-quarter is for recording four or more NDI or directly connected captured video sources like HDMI or SDI with a capture card or a PCIe card directly into your computer and recording them all simultaneously for post-production, which is quite popular. A lot of people like to do that. So that brings us to the end of this video on how to record video with vMix. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.